Hello everybody, I am Dude Long Couch, and this is my first ever Let's Play with full commentary of Resident Evil 4 The Ultimate HD Edition, which just came out on Steam a couple months ago. Now I know that there's about 8,000 million Let's Plays of Resident Evil 4 on YouTube already, but to be honest with you, when I was getting the stuff together to get my channel going, and I was trying to think about which game I wanted to do first, there was no other game that I wanted to do first other than Resident Evil 4. And the reason for that is because, A, it's just one of my all-time favorite games. I think it's one of the best games ever made, and I love it to death. And B, it's actually the game that got me into Let's Playing in the first place. Uh, I didn't know what a Let's Play was until one day I was bored, and I got on YouTube and searched for Resident Evil 4, and uh, I found some Let's Plays, and the rest is history. I fell down that rabbit hole, and now here I am. So anyway, I don't want to bore you too much before we even get started here, but I want to say thanks for watching and hope you enjoy. Start a new game on normal. Resident Evil. 4. You can see from the menu here, I did already beat this game, beat this version before. I've played it multiple times, but I just want to do a, a normal run for my first LP. Kind of do it vanilla like. And I'm going to shut up for the cutscene. I'll never forget it. It was the year when those grisly murders occurred in the Arklay Mountains. Soon after, the news was out to the whole world, revealing that it was the fault of a secret viral experiment conducted by the international pharmaceutical enterprise, Umbrella. The virus broke out in a nearby mountain community, Raccoon City, and hit the peaceful little town with a devastating blow crippling its very foundation. Not taking any chances, the President of the United States ordered a contingency plan to sterilize Raccoon City. With the whole affair gone public, the United States government issued an indefinite suspension of business decree to Umbrella. Soon its stock prices crashed, and for all intents and purposes, Umbrella was finished. Six years have passed since that horrendous incident. I received special training via a secret organization working under the direct control of the president. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Cornell, why am I the one who always gets the short end of the stick? Yo, who are you really? Come on and tell us. You are a long way from home, cowboy. You have my sympathies. Guess that's a local's way of breaking the ice. Anyway, you know what this is all about. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. What? All by yourself? <laughs> I'm sure you boys didn't just tag along so we could sing Kumbaya together at some Boy Scout bonfire. Then again, maybe you did. <laughs> Oh, you crazy American. It's a direct order from the chief himself. I tell you, it's no picnic. I'm counting on you guys. Well, that's a bad idea. I kind of intensely dislike those guys, just because they're such dickheads. And they're also pretty worthless. It was right before I was to take on my duties of protecting the president's daughter when she was abducted. That's the ultimate reason I'm in this lonely and rural part of Europe. According to our intelligence, there's reliable information about a sighting of a girl that looks very similar to the president's daughter. Apparently she's being withheld by some unidentified group of people. Who would have thought that my first job would have been a rescue mission? Freezing. So cold all of a sudden. Eh, must be my imagination. Sorry it took so long. Apology rejected.
Just up ahead is the village. I'll go and have a look around. Yeah, we'll stay and watch that car. Don't want to get any parking tickets. Right. Parking tickets. Good luck. Bunch of jackasses. Jeez. Who are these guys? Jackasses. Did you say something? Nope. Leon, I hope you can hear me. I'm Ingrid Hunnigan. I'll be your support on this mission. Loud and clear. Somehow I thought you'd be a little older. So the subject's name's Ashley Graham, right? That's right. She's the daughter of the president. So try to behave yourself, okay? <laughs> Whoever this group is, they sure picked the wrong girl to kidnap. I'll try to find some more information on my end as well. Good. Talk to you later. Leon out. I should check out that file, but I'm not going to. So now we're in the game proper. You get control of Leon. You can run around. You can talk to these guys if you want. <laughs> Forget your makeup or something? <laughs> You're funny. Fucking idiot. Not much point in that, because they suck. You can try to run back here across the bridge, but they... Not that way, cowboy. Throw a shit fit about that, too. God, I can't wait for you guys to die. So this is the Ultimate HD edition of the game. It runs at full 1080p, 60 frames per second. And they up a lot of the textures. Not all of them. So some parts look better than others, as you'll see throughout the game. It's probably the best version of the game. And I am playing with the 360 controller because I am not a huge fan of the mouse controls. I have heard that they have fixed them, they've patched them, and made them better. But I, the last time I used them, I just wasn't a fan. And I'm, I'm used to playing this game with the controller, so that's what I'm going to do. As you saw, you can shoot the crows there to get money and items. And there's an item around the uh, corner here. That I always run back and grab first just so I have it. Oh, it's money this time. Now if this was like the full game, or how should I say, if this was a little bit later in the game, you'd be able to jump through this window action movie style, but they don't let you do that because it kind of ruins the little setup they have here of when you go into this guy's house uninvited and invade his privacy and start a cutscene. Uh, excuse me, sir? I was wondering if you might recognize a girl in this photograph. ¿Qué carajo estás haciendo aquí? ¡Lárgate, cabrón! Sorry to have bothered you. I don't know exactly what he said there, but it's something along the lines of, What the fuck are you doing here? Get out of here, bastard! And then he tries to kill you with an axe. Which he's well within his rights to do. Honestly, I, you know, I can't get mad, but I am gonna kill him. Shoot him in the face, kick him, and he's done. Now those two douche rockets get what's coming to him. And I love that little shot there with Leon doing the little eye dart looking around like WPS, mate. Shit. Is everything okay? There was a hostile local. I had no choice but to neutralize him. <laughs> there are still others. I invaded some dude's house without even knocking and he attacked and me, so I killed village. him. Take whatever measures necessary to save the subject. Understood. So, you can examine this guy. He's not a zombie, but I shot him just like one. There's some uh, really gross shit back here. They've killed a lot of people. I hope Ashley's okay. Nah, she's dead. But don't worry about it. Back here is some handgun ammo you want to grab. Ammo is kind of at a premium towards the beginning of the game. Now you can actually look out here and uh, take some pot shots at these guys before you jump out, but it's kind of hard. And I'm just going to jump out action movie style. And take them all on. I think there's three guys out here. They try to surround you right away. But you don't let them. You shoot them in the face. You kick. The almighty kick of death. 
and then you knife people to save ammunition. That is the Resident Evil 4 way. So, got through that first part of the game using only three rounds. That's pretty damn good. And these guys dropped a lot of stuff for me too. That's a good start. Now if you want to, you can come back this way and take a look at what happened to the, d the two jerk bags. Looks like uh, they got rammed off the cliff here. They broke the bridge and they threw those guys in the drink. Oh, no. That's too bad. I'm really going to miss them. So now we can move on. We got everything we need to get from here. In here we have the infamous typewriter. Anyone who's familiar with older Resident Evil games knows that that's how you save your game. Luckily they don't make you collect the ink ribbons in this one. In the old one you had to find ink ribbons and you could only save if you had one. Once you ran out of them you were SOL. But in this game you can save as much as you want. And the game's also really good about checkpointing. Uh, after like each encounter and boss fights and things like that. Now there's some more crows up here that you can shoot. You always want to shoot the one on the, the signpost first because he drops a grenade. The other one might fly away, he might not. I think it depends on like how close you are. But just to be safe I always shoot the one on the right first. And here we have a dog caught in a bear trap. You definitely want to help this guy out. You, if you want to, you can shoot him, and he'll just kind of get out anyway and run off. He doesn't die from being shot, but I don't know why you would do that, because you'd have to be a huge asshole. And also, he will come and help you out later. I know, oh my god, spoilers. Now, there's a red herb over here that you want to grab. The herb system returns from the old Resident Evil games. And before I forget, here is your inventory system. I actually love this inventory system. It's it's really stupid. It doesn't make a lot of sense uh, as to why I like it because it's just it's just one more thing you have to manage, and a lot of people just think it's a pain in the ass. But I actually get a lot of joy out of organizing my inventory and making sure everything is like organized and in a spot where I want it, so I can see exactly how much I have of everything. It really doesn't matter where things are as long as you have enough space to fit in the things you need but I like keeping it organized I get joy out of it down here we have a couple explosive traps you can see the trip wires there and there's some jerk nuts up there waiting to ambush me so I'm gonna actually oh, I almost walked into a bear trap that would have been bad I'm gonna kite him down and see if I can get him to set this trap off or blow him up in it got him and you can save a little bit of ammo doing that. I'll take your monies. And we'll move on. This part is pretty cool. Come in here, grab some items, knife the boxes, and then turn to leave and oh my god, what is that? That is terrible. Let's check it. Guess there's no sex discrimination here. Better find her fast. I already told you she's dead. So yeah, I love the way that's set up. This game is just designed so intelligently. You know, if you don't know that's coming, the first time you ever play this game, you come in here and you're drawn to these items here and you grab them and then almost everybody will naturally turn left to loop around and come out and it's just in your face. Some dead woman with a pitchfork jammed right through her forehead. Which is pretty messed up, but it's not actually the most messed up thing in this game. So, if that gives you any indication. Can I get them both with one bullet? If I can hit them with the knife. Got it. That's ammo conservation right there, and that is the core of this game. If you uh, shoot dudes in like the foot or the leg, you can sometimes set up the kick animation. If you can shoot them in the head, you will pretty much always get it. Uh, there's no reason you shouldn't. So you want to go for headshots and then you want to move in and kick. And then once they're down on the ground, you pull out your knife to finish them off. And if you can kill guys that way, you can really stack up your ammo and make things easier for yourself. Now over here there's a jackass waiting to 
ambush you when you walk down there. But if you're careful, you can actually shoot them through this little window here and pull them out. Got him. So now he'll come out and I'll have the upper hand. If I can actually hit him. Kick! These guys in the beginning are really weak, so a lot of times they'll die just from like one or two shots and a kick. But later on, you definitely have to uh, apply the knife liberally. And they are really hooking me up with ammo. Like, I'm, I'm doing good about being conservative, but they're... I feel like they're giving me a lot more than they usually do at the beginning of these games. So I'm not sure what's if they're setting me up to get my ass kicked up here. But we're approaching one of the most iconic moments in video game history, in my opinion. Oop. Ingram wants to talk. Leon, how you holding up? Bad question, Hunnigan. Sorry to hear that. I'm sending you a playing manual. Hope you find it useful. I'll take a look at it. Thanks. I love the way Leon says that. I'll take a look at it. Thanks. In his, like, sexy voice. Playing Manual 2. This just tells you what the controls are and the different things you can do. I already know all this stuff. If you really want to read it, there you go. You can go ahead and do that. I'm going to file it away and never look at it again. If you run up here a little bit, you can stop and take out your binoculars and look up ahead. This part is so cool. I really can't say it enough. So you can just kind of look around at what's happening. There's one of the douchebags who they... <laughs> apparently they hung him up, burned him at the stake. It looks like they gouged out his eyes or stabbed him in the eyes or something. And now they're just kind of going in, going about their business while he's burning. His corpse is just feeding the flames. And everyone's just kind of like, yeah, let's go do some farming. There's some fucking chickens here. Let's... It's, uh, who cares about what's going on over there? That's normal. So, this is the part of the game where they really just throw you into the, uh, into the fire. Not the way they threw that guy into the fire. I'm talking about a metaphorical fire. And, uh, well, you'll see. If you don't already know. Now, here's one thing a lot of people don't know about this part. Uh, a lot of people know about the chainsaw guy that's coming up. It's really not a spoiler. I'm sorry if that's a spoiler to you. It shouldn't be. But what people don't know is that you can actually get two chainsaw guys in this part. And that means that you get double the cash for killing them. But the way you gotta do it is you actually have to sneak around back here. Try and avoid as much combat as possible. And if you run up this trail back here, you will find a chainsaw guy waiting for you. Now this is risky because he is kind of difficult to take out. You don't have a shotgun or anything besides one grenade and your handgun. And uh, Chainsaw Guy is no joke. I already took a shot to the face. Well, I took a hatchet or whatever it was to the face. So that could have went better. But you knock him down with the grenade and then shoot him in the head a whole bunch of times. You can take him out relatively easily. I got a ruby, which I can later sell for 10,000 pesetas, and that is super helpful. Please don't pitchfork me. Thank you. Uh, you want as much money as possible in this game because you want to buy and upgrade your guns. Now once you kill that first chainsaw guy, you come back here and run into the house and it'll trigger this cutscene that'll bring out the other guy. And then you kill him and you get another 10,000 pesetas. I always want to say dollars, but they're not dollars. Savings. But yeah, so this is what uh, most people do when they first get here. They kind of run in and just start fighting dudes, and then they run into this house. And it really does a great job of, like, A, the atmosphere is incredible. Just all these seemingly normal-looking villagers just kind of going nuts and trying to kill you. And it also does a good job of introducing you to the mechanics of this game. You can come over here, and you can see that you can push these shelves into the way block the windows and that gives you a little extra time to uh, loot around here and figure out what you're doing and things like that. There's not much point in doing that in this house because I'm just going to go out and fight them anyway. And you can see I picked up the shotgun right there, which is amazing. You definitely want a shotgun in this game. It goes a long way <laughs> towards keeping you alive. So let's equip that. Let's push this ladder down. That's another mechanic that they introduce you here, introduce to you by just throwing you right into the frying pan. 
uh, the villagers can use ladders to uh, climb into the areas that you're inhabiting and try to get at you that way. Oh god. Okay. Well, that's not a great start. I want to get on this side and kill this chainsaw guy as quick as possible. Shit! I didn't think that guy was up that quickly. Alright. Let's heal up, because I'm almost dead already. And you know what? Let's grenade the shit out of this big group here. Alright. That'll buy us a little bit of time. Once you kill enough dudes, you'll trigger this cutscene where they'll send more guys after you. But that's okay. Um, as long as you don't kill too many and trigger the end of this sequence, you still have time to uh, kill this chainsaw guy. Get away from me. Oh, that took him out. That's super helpful. Alright, let's conserve shotgun ammo. Let's grab my loot real quick. That was 10,000 right there, so... That's everything I wanted from this area. Got both chainsaw guys. I had to use uh, a first aid spray, but that's okay. That happens a lot in this game. And now, you really just want to kill as many guys as possible, as efficiently as possible. Um, God, I ran right into that. Because once you kill enough guys, you'll trigger the end of this sequence, and then you can move on and loot and all that good stuff. Oh man, that was terrible. I thought I was going to get the kick prompt on that woman. But I didn't. Let's use a chicken egg. Just to bring myself back up to green. I don't want to use those mixtures yet if I can avoid it. There's a lot of dudes here. Uh, serve shotgun ammo. That was close. That was so close. Oh, I have to reload. Alright. So, just standing there. Oh, hello. And, uh taking shots at everybody as they come at you is not the greatest strategy. There's a lot of places around here that you can use to give yourself an advantage. You can barricade yourself in a couple houses. You can just kind of kite everybody around the perimeter. And uh, to keep them in front of you. You don't want to get surrounded in this game. That's really the key. If you let them get too close, they'll grab you and do some damage, or like hit you in the face with an axe. Which, you know, gotta imagine that hurts. I've never personally taken a hatchet wound to the face, but something tells me it's not the most enjoyable thing. Alright, I'm just gonna start pouring bullets into these guys. run through oh okay that was that was very fortunate timing that last villager I killed was the one I needed Lord Sadler Lord Sadler you'll meet him later he's a douche Where's everyone going? Bingo? Great line, Leon. Honigan, I have some bad news. I've confirmed the body of an officer. Something's happened to the people here. Leon, you need to get out of there. Look for a tower and follow the trail near it. Got it. I have some other bad news, Hunnigan. I also just murdered like 30 villagers. But I'm not going to bother mentioning that. So that's the intro to Resident Evil 4. You know, this game came out um, almost 10 years ago now. So you can judge for yourself whether it's held up. I know it doesn't meet some of today's standards for the big blockbuster games. But I still think it's pretty great and I'm looking forward to playing through this again. Yellow Herb! You can combine the Yellow Herb with the red and the green to get a complete mixture, and that will give you a full heal and also extend your life a little bit. We'll talk more about that later. 
So this is probably a, a good natural stopping point for the first part of this series. Uh, if anybody is still watching, I want to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a comment and let me know what you thought. Or if you didn't enjoy it, you can let me know that too. It's all good. And I will see you in part two. Thanks.